Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and in this video, it's going to be all about how we add React to Meteor. Now, this is going to be through NPM. We're going to install React, and we're going to actually get it going. So let's get started now. Okay, so last we had, basically, we nuked everything. We got rid of uh, all of the files that we were looking at, and as you can see, nothing here. Now, as I go, uh, I'm just going to be working in Atom here, as I explained in the video before. However, I always get questions about the theme and all that stuff, so I'm using uh, Material Dark, and I believe it's just Material Dark inside of here. We can check for preferences, look for themes. Atom material, material dark, there it is. Cool, uh, just so I don't get any questions about that. Uh, but as you can see here, we deleted everything from our client folder except for main.css, and we have nothing in the settings folder other than a main.js, which is just some initializing code. So let's actually get started in actually making this an application. The first thing I wanna do is I wanna open up my terminal from the root of our application. Uh, so you can leave media running. You can see it's running here. I just opened up a new tab. If you're using iTerm, if I believe if you hit Command D, it should open up another tab from the same uh, folder that you're in. And from inside of your application, we just need to do Meteor npm install hyphen hyphen save, and then we want to install React and React hyphen Dom. Now, before React DOM used to be a part of React, it's now a separate package. In addition, if you have NPM installed, if you've done other node projects and have used NPM before, you don't need to use this Meteor command before here. You can simply type in NPM install package, uh, just like any other ecosystem. The reason why we do Meteor NPM install is because Basically, you don't need npm installed on your machine to use it. If you type Meteor npm install, you don't have to have Node or npm installed or anything, and it just takes care of it. But as you can see here, uh, I'm going to use Meteor npm, but from here on out, I'm going to just use normal npm anytime else we add anything. I just wanted to make that distinction clear. And as you can see, we've now added React to our application. If we check out our code, you can see we now have a node modules folder, which includes React and all its dependencies. In addition, our package.json has been updated under dependencies. We now have React and React DOM. Super cool. Okay, so now what we want to do is let's inside of our main or inside of our client folder, let's go ahead and add a new folder or a new file, which is going to be main.html. I know that this is the same main.html that we just deleted, but I want to start fresh here. So we can have a head, and inside of our head, we can give this a title, and this will be React Meteor Voting, okay? Now, I want to go ahead and have a body tag, and inside of this body, I can just have a straight up div with an ID of render target. Okay, the ID doesn't matter. We're just gonna be using this to reference, but render target makes sense. It's what you'll see in a lot of tutorials. Render target, say, hey, this is where we're gonna render our application. Now, if you're wondering how I did that auto completion, I'm using a package called Emmet, which is pretty standard fare at this point. A lot of people use it and like Emmet. If we were to do something like pound, uh, let's do the pound word. You can see it creates a div with an ID of word. Um, and likewise, if we do dot word tab, uh, you can see it creates a div with a class of word instead of an ID. I'll be using Emmet throughout this and I can call out these shortcuts if you do not know them, but otherwise the HTML should be pretty clear. I like to keep my text size pretty large when I'm doing this. So as you can see here, we have a body and we have a head. And in our application, we should now at least see the title of our application. If you look up top here, Meteor React Voting, despite not having anything actually showing up. Okay, so now that we have our render target, let's go ahead and add a main.js file. We can do a new file, main.js, and we're going to import React from React, okay? And you'll notice that this is capitalized, this is all lowercase, single string quotes. 
So you might be wondering, what's up with this import React from React syntax that we have to have? And if you've ever worked in Meteor before, or maybe uh, you haven't worked in any sort of newer JavaScript frameworks, you might not be accustomed to seeing something like this. Because in Meteor previously, we never had to import anything from anything. Well, technically in the client folder, we don't have to import anything, right? Everything in the client folder is going to be sort of lazily evaluated. And in fact, if we were to get rid of this, what we're about to type would work just fine. But it's nice to be able to get used to this syntax because anytime we wanna use something in another file, you have to make it available, right? Especially once we get going with our imports folder. And I'll draw more attention to importing and exporting as we go. But really what we need to do right now is actually just to go ahead and render something. So let's go ahead and also import Meteor while we're at it. We can import, and then this time we actually have to have some brackets. And inside of these brackets, we can say Meteor, and then from, and instead of a simple uh, one line string, we actually have a path here, and this is Meteor forward slash Meteor. Uh, a little bit on that more as we import more things for Meteor. And now another thing we need to import is actually render. We need to import the render function from React DOM. So we can say render from, and then we're going to say React hyphen DOM. Okay. Now, to explain a little bit about these brackets here, it makes more sense to talk about it with this React DOM. If we were importing React DOM just straight up, you wouldn't need these brackets. But since uh, render is essentially a sub export, you could say, of React DOM, we need the brackets to say, yeah, we're not bringing in all of React DOM, we're just bringing in render from React DOM. Again, when we write our own export uh, statements, this will make a lot more sense. Now let's go ahead and just simply write a Meteor startup function. We can say meteor.startup, okay? And now inside of this function, what this takes is it's going to take a callback function here. So we have another set of parentheses, and then we can have an arrow function, and then we can go ahead and have brackets here. Cool, okay, so just like that, uh, we have this callback function here. Now, an arrow function is no different from a regular function except for how it scopes this. Uh, we're going to be using the arrow functions in some places and the normal function syntax in other places, and it will make more sense once we actually need to use this. But for right now, the arrow syntax is just nice inside of uh, this sort of style. It takes up less space, and we're not using this. So uh, typically, you wouldn't use the arrow syntax just because it takes up less space, but in this particular instance, it works just fine. And what we want to do now is say render and we get to use this fancy render function from React DOM, and we want to render what would be a React component. Now we don't have any components yet, but let's just go ahead and pretend that we do, pretend that we have a component named app. Now a component in React is sort of just like an element in HTML. You can totally just imagine this as a self-closing element like like an image tag or something like that. Either way, a component in React is essentially, you could think of it as an element that you can reuse over and over again. In this particular case, the app element is going to be sort of our container for our entire application. Now we have a comma, and the second thing it's going to take is the location in which we're going to be rendering app. So we want to render app within document dot get element by ID, which is just standard JavaScript. And inside of here, we have a string. And if you remember, in our main.html, we had an ID of render target. So let's go ahead and make sure we have render target. And we're going to render the app component into render target. Now, at this point, we should be able to head to our document. I'm going to go ahead and inspect this, and we should see a very specific error. Um, app is not defined, which should be obvious to you because we never defined app, right? So simply having a component named app 
needs to be defined. Now, many times you would want to do this in a separate file, and we will in a minute. However, for right now, I think it's important just to get up and running. So let's go ahead and create a new component simply by just saying class app extends component. Okay. Now, this might be confusing again. We're learning a lot of new stuff here. Component. Where do we get component from? Well, we haven't imported component. So let's do that. We can say import react comma, and then inside of brackets, component. So we're going to be importing a component from react. And now we can use component here. Now, if we weren't going to do this, we could have actually just done react dot component because we already imported react and it would have worked just fine. However, this just seems nicer to me. And it's definitely how you're going to see things a lot through a lot of different other examples. And it's just going to make a lot of sense. Now let's go ahead and simply have a render function. The render function is required for all react components. And let's go ahead and have a return inside of this function. Keep in mind that react can seem kind of weird. And there's some things that may be a little bit different from how you're used to doing them. But at the end of the day, it's all JavaScript. And even though it's JSX or essentially a different type of JavaScript where we can use essentially HTML elements within our JavaScript, it's still JavaScript. So we have a render function, it needs to return something. So let's go ahead and now let's just have a straight up H1 that just says hello without a W because that's not how you spell hello. And we just close this off just like this. Okay. So this is standard and this is what a React component is going to look like for you. Basically, we say a new class, the component name extends component. We have our brackets. We have our render function, and then we actually return something. Now, a component can be a lot more complex than this, and most of the time it will be. But this is a great first starting point. What we should see now is hello. So this is pretty fantastic because, I mean, well, I didn't have to do anything really. We just created a startup function and an app, and then here we have our component. Nice and easy. So if this is your first time using React, this HTML inside of JavaScript or HTML outside of an HTML document is going to feel super weird. And it might be a little unsettling, but trust me, I had the same feelings. And after a couple of even days using React, you see the benefits almost instantly. So here we have our hello. Our class app extends component, and this is our very first React app using Meteor, and it works awesomely. Okay, so this is non-complex at all. In the next few videos, we're going to be getting into actually adding things to our database. We're going to have what's called collections. We're going to be able to have actual stuff and see some of the benefits of Meteor, such as instant updating when you add things to the database. It's sort of like uh, if you've ever used any sort of data binding where you can type in an input field and see that text updating live on the screen. Well, imagine that while it's saving to the database the whole time. It's super cool. So there's a lot of really great benefits to using Meteor, especially with React. So in the next few videos, we're going to be taking this example more and more complex, and we're going to build out our voting application, and it's going to be super cool. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you want to watch the rest of these videos, head to store.leveluptutorials.com and purchase this series right now. It's super cheap, it's on sale, and it really helps support the creation of free videos on this channel. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.